This teaching you're about to listen to was preached by Jagede Sunday E and recorded live at God's Family Bible Church, Trinidad. Jagede Sunday E is the general coordinator of Arabs of Revival Ministries and the School of Discipleship. He is also the missionary pastor of GFBC Trinidad under the leadership of Pastor Abology Akimbo, the general overseer of God's Family Bible Church Worldwide, Palm Coast, Florida. Listen and be transformed. Our Father, we want to thank you, Lord, for your love towards us. We thank you, Lord, for such a privilege to be in your house this morning. Our Father, we thank you, Lord, for your world that you have prepared for us. We open up our hearts, Lord, and we ask that we speak to each and every one of us. We ask, oh God, that your world will give us understanding. Thank you, Father. Bless your word in our heart this morning. And in Jesus' name we pray. Can I hear you say loud amen? amen. Glory be to Jesus. Now, we've been uh, on a series called Living a Fulfilled Life. And what we've been talking about is how you can live your life according to God's plan for your life. According to God's ordained purpose for your life. And this is very important. Now, you need to understand that life is not a dress rehearsal. You know what they call a dress rehearsal? Now, you are not warming up for something. You know, a dress rehearsal, you, you just come and then before the real thing, and then you rehearse on the stage, and the next day you go and perform. No, life is not like that. This is the real thing. Let's say this is, this is the real thing. Now, you have already started living. You need to know that. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? The clock is ticking already. Time is going. Out of the appointed years that God has appointed for you to live, you're already spending some of it already. So life is already going. So it's not a dress rehearsal. This is the real thing. You're not going to have another opportunity. You have just only one opportunity, a privilege to live your life. And do you know what? God has a plan how he wants you to live that life. And that is all that we're talking about. That each and every one of us, we need to find out God's master plan for our life. And then we live according to that plan. And when we live according to that plan, it is a fulfilled life. You are going to be fulfilled. Are you listening? You're going to be happy. Your life is going to inspire others. Your life is going to be a blessing to other people. And that is what God wants for our life. That's what God wants for our life. So this is living a fulfilled life, part four. Please take your Bible. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 25. The book of Proverbs chapter 25 verse 2. The Bible says, It is the glory of God to conceal a matter, to hide something. But the glory of king is to search out a matter. Now look at what the Bible says. The Bible says it is God's glory to conceal. Now so this is what the Bible is saying. That when we come into this world, our purpose, God's master plan for our life is concealed. Are you with me this morning? Now God, it's not as if God does not want us to know. The plan is for you. God has a plan that he has written. He, he has a purpose that he has designed before you were born. And do you know what? When you are being born, when you are coming into this world, God concealed it. God hide that plan. So why did God have to hide the plan that he has for our life? It is because number one, God wants you to seek it out. God wants you to search for it. Now, so God hide for me his plan and purpose for my life and God is waiting for me to wake up one day and say I can't be living my life like this anyhow. I want to live my life according to God's master plan and then I go to God and say, God and say God, what do you plan for this life? I know you have a beautiful plan. I know you have a great purpose for my life. Lord, I'm ready for him. That's why God hide that plan. Also, God hide it, now listen to me, to test our willingness. Now, if, you, if God hide it for us, and listen to me, God wants you to desire it. God wants us to be willing. Now, so in other words, if you are not willing, you are not going to know it. 
If you don't desire it, you're not going to know it. And that's what I said about two weeks ago, that you need to desire the plan. It starts with you desiring. I don't want to live my life anyhow. I don't just want to be a copycat. I don't want to live as the rest of the people. I know there's a unique plan for my life, and I want to find out what it is, and I want to live according to that plan. Now, once there's such a desire and a hunger in your heart, then God begins to speak to you about his plan and purpose for your life. And do you know what is also in our best interest? Can you imagine if you were born with your master plan in your hand? Are you listening to what I'm talking about? With God's purpose for your life written on your chest. And then it is written on your chest that you are going to be a prime minister of Trinidad in so-so year to come. Guess what will happen? You have so many enemies. <laughs> many people will be envious they will jealous you and if care's not taken they may kill you before the time those who don't like you those who don't like your parents those who don't like your family why? because they already know what God has planned for your life and that is why God hides it that is why God keeps it in his mind until when you go to him then God reveals it to you are you is to protect us. It's to protect God's plan for our life. And what I'm saying is this, that each and every one of us, we must come to a point in our life that we don't just want to live our life anyhow. We want to live our life as God wants us to live it. We want to live as it is intended by God. And so when you are ready, what do you do? You go to God. You start asking God, Lord, what are the beautiful plans that you have for my life? What is your purpose? What do you want me to use my life for? What do you want me to achieve with my life? What are your plans? What are your purpose and goals for my life? Now, these are the things that we are talking about. And I want you to follow me. And this, this morning, I want to begin to focus on this. That when you desire... When you are ready to pursue God's purpose, when you are ready to live according to God's plan for your life, and then you begin to ask God, now listen to me, God begin to speak to you. God begin to unfold, God begin to reveal his plan and purpose to you. How does God do that? What are the ways through which God reveals his plan and purpose? I begin to focus on that, and I'm going to uh, consider three, and then the next uh, next week. So there are about seven major ways, primary way through which God can reveal his plan and his purpose for our life to us. And we begin to look at them one after the other. And my desire is that each and every one of us, everyone under the sound of my voice, that we will be able to discover, we'll be able to know for sure, to understand God's plan for our life. We'll be able to understand what God wants us to use our life to achieve before we leave this world. Now, go with me to the book of Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. There are some basic truths I wanted to understand before I go into that. Look at Romans chapter 12. Glory be to Jesus. The book of Romans chapter 12. Look at it from verse 1. Paul speaking here, he said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this war, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now, look at what Paul is saying here. Paul is saying, guys, you want to know the will of God? Surrender yourself to God. Give yourself to God as a living sacrifice. Be willing to do whatever God calls you to do. Be willing to live your life as God has planned it. Now, don't follow the world. Don't live by the standard of the world. That's what he's talking about. Don't be conformed to this world. Don't envy those who do not know God. No, God has a plan for your own life. Are you listening to me? God's plan and purpose for your life is different from mine. So don't look at me at all. Don't copy me at all. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? Find out God's specific unique plan for your life. And look at what it says for that. It said that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Now Paul is saying to all that the will of God, the perfect plan and purpose of God for our life can be proven. You can prove it. Now what does that word prove means? In Greek, it means dokimazo. And listen to what it means. It means to recognize as genuine after examination, it means to approve. It actually means to design. So what is Paul saying to all? Paul is saying that the will of God is not something that you can know. It's something you can be sure of. 
He says something you can prove, something you can recognize. So I can know it when I find out God's purpose for my life. Are you listening to me? You will know it when you find out what is God's plan for your life. It's not something that you do by try by error. Oh, I don't know, but I'm just doing it. No. I know this is what God wants me to do. I know God wants me to be in Trinidad and Tobago. That's why I'm here today. And you listen to what I'm talking about. Now, so it is something you can be sure of. You can be sure of your divine purpose in life. You can be sure of your assignment in life. You can be sure of what God wants you to do with your life. That's what Paul is saying. That it is possible to be, to be so sure, to, be des- to design it, to recognize it, to prove it. And you listen to what I'm talking about. So God's plan, God's will for your life is something that can be proven. It's something that can be recognized. Do you understand what I'm talking about? And I want you to know it. I want you to recognize it. I want you to be sure that if somebody asks you and say, are you living your life according to God's plan and God's purpose? You can beat your chest and say, yes. I know I am in the will of God. I know my life is going as God has written it, as God has intended. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So that's what I wanted to have at the back of your mind, that you can be sure of. So if I ask you and say, this way you are living your life, are you sure that is the way God wants you to live your life? And if you are not sure, that means you have not found God's purpose. Are you sure this is what you should be doing with your life, with your time? If you are not sure, that means you have not found God's purpose. If you find God's purpose, you'll be sure of it. You'll be sure of it. That's what Paul is saying. So it's something that can be proven. Glory be to Jesus. Now listen to this. I want you to know that each and every one of us, we can know for sure, for certainty, what is the will and the plan of God for our life. Look at what Jesus said. John chapter 10, the book of John chapter 10. Now, it is very crucial for you to understand this basic truth. God's purpose for your life can be proven, it can be recognized, it can be designed, and you can know it for yourself. Now, so what am I saying? You don't need to go to any prophet. Now, listen to me and say, please, I am confused about my life. Can you please uh, tell me what I should be doing with my life? No, God wants you as a person to know it. God wants to speak to you intimately. Personally, Do you understand what I'm talking about? Now listen to me. More than anyone, God wants you to know what he has planned for your life. Are you following me this morning? Look at what Jesus said in the book of John chapter 10. So God wants to speak to you, lead you, and guide you personally. Personally. It is so important for you to understand that. Now look at what Jesus said. John chapter 10 from verse 1. Most surely I say to you, he who does not enter the shipful by the door, but climb up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. Verse 2, but he who enter by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. Now look at verse 3. This is where I'm coming to now. To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice. And he called his own sheep by name. That's how God wants to lead you, by name, personally, intimately. And he leads them out. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them. And the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of stranger. The Bible says in Psalm 100 verse 3 that we are God's people and we are the sheep of his pastor. Let someone say, I am God's sheep. sheep. Alright, so God is our shepherd. Jesus is our shepherd. And the Bible says we are the sheep of his pastor. Now listen to what Jesus said. Jesus said, guys, this is how I lead my sheep. I call them by their name. He said, I go before them. And I leave them. And he said, they hear my voice. They know my voice. They recognize my voice. Do you know what Jesus is saying to you? That look, now, if you want me to lead you, don't look at anybody. I want to call you by your name and lead you personally, specifically. Many of us, we run to the prophet, we run to spiritualists, we run to the palm reader, to the stargazer. Are you listening to me? And then we want to find out what is in our future. We want to find out what has God planned for our life. Now, you do not go. God wants to have a personal relationship with you. He said, come, I want to call you by your name and lead you personally, not by those people. Are you with me? God, so you need to understand that God wants to lead you personally. You can hear the voice of God. That's what you need to understand. Now, so 
As we begin to look at how God leads us into his plan and purpose, I want you to know that each and every one of us that have given our life to Jesus, we are God's sheep. And listen to me, deep down in our spirit, we have the capacity to know the voice of God. You can hear God's voice for yourself. So don't go to any man. Don't go to anybody to find out what is God saying. You can hear. God wants to speak to you as a person. Jesus said, I call my sheep by name. They hear my voice. He said, they know. The word know means they recognize it. They recognize. They know my voice. They know my voice. Most of the time, now listen to me. God speaks to us. And the reason why we don't respond at time, we don't know that is God speaking to us. I want you to know that each and every one of us that is born again, we already have the ability in our spirit to hear, to know, and to understand the voice of God. Now listen to these gospel. When you gave your life to Jesus, God gave you what is called eternal life, everlasting life. Do you know what everlasting life is? Everlasting life is a spiritual capacity for relationship with God. Eternal life is a spiritual understanding. Look at what the Bible says. Let's look at these two scriptures. The book of John chapter 17. So you can know the voice of God. You have an internal receiver in you to receive the voice of God. To hear the leading of God. So you can be led into your purpose. God has put in you what it takes to be led, to be guided into his purpose. John chapter 17. The book of John chapter 17. Look at what Jesus called eternal life. Verse 3. And this is eternal life. Look at what Jesus called eternal life. That they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have said. So eternal life is knowing. It's a spiritual knowledge. It's a spiritual understanding. And in your spirit, you have eternal life. You have ability to know God. You have ability to recognize God's leading. God's leading. 1 John chapter 5, the book of 1 John chapter 5. Start from the back of the Bible. <laughs> you will arrive there on time. 1 John chapter 5, look at it from verse 12. 1 John chapter 5 from verse 12. He who has the Son has life. Let's say, I have the Son. I have, the son. I have life. Okay, he who does not have the Son of God does not have life. So if you have Jesus, you have the life of God. Look at what the Bible says, verse 13. These things I've written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. Look at verse 20 now. And we know the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding. Let somebody say understanding. understanding. Okay, say an understanding that we may know him. Who is true and we in him who is true in his son Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Can you see eternal life is to know and is to understand God and God's leading. God's leading. That's eternal life. So as many that have Jesus, that have the son of God, the Bible says we already have eternal life. And that eternal life is a spiritual capacity to know and to understand what God is saying to us. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So each and every one of you under the sound of my voice, if you have received Jesus and you have eternal life, I'm saying to you that you can know the voice of God. You can know the will of God. You can understand the purpose of God. Are you with me? You have what it takes. Now listen to me. Listen to me, God's people. Now listen to me. Now that spiritual knowledge, that eternal life, that understanding is in your spirit. But you know you are not just a spirit. You are a spirit, you have a soul, you live in the body. First Thessalonians 5.23 say, a complete man is a spirit, soul, and body. Now, so, the understanding that God is talking about is in your spirit. Are you listening to me? So, my spirit is the one that know, that can hear, that can recognize the voice of God, not my soul, not my body. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So, we understand by our spirit. But our soul does not understand. Do you understand what I'm talking about? And that is why we are confused. Now, when you are confused, when you don't know, you don't understand, what is the will of God? What is God say? Now, listen to me. Your spirit already knows. Your spirit understands. Because your spirit has a tunnel, has spiritual understanding. It is your mind that does not know. I've talked to people before. 
No, they find themselves in the wrong relationship. Are you listening to me? And then when they come and they are regretting, they say, Pastor, do you know when I was going out with that guy, you know, just before I married that guy, he says, something within me is telling me this guy is not the right. He said, somehow, but I can't really figure it out. You know, I can't. Everything about him seems all right. He's handsome, he's, he's kind, he's generous, he's, he's loving. He said, but somehow, something within me. Do you know where that is coming from? From the Spirit. The Spirit is saying, no, that is not the right guy. But because the mind, the soul, does not receive what the Spirit is saying, they still went ahead and made a mistake. So what am I saying to you? Now, don't ever think you don't know the will of God. You know the will of God. You have ability to know it. But that ability is in your spirit. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? So when we talk about you understanding the will of God, we're actually talking about your soul, your mind knowing what your spirit already knows. Do you get it? All right. Look, look at what the Bible says. Look, look, look at what the Bible says. So how do you, how do I, how do I know what my spirit already know? How do I receive? How do I understand the will of God, the plan of God, the purpose of God that my spirit already know? Now look at what the Bible says. Look, look, look at what the Bible says here. Psalm 119 verse 130. The Bible says the entrance of your word gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. That's what the word of God does. So when you hear the word of God, the Bible said the word of God will give you understanding. What kind of understanding? The understanding that your spirit already has. The Bible said the Son of God has come and has given us understanding. This understanding is in our spirit. How do we make our soul to also understand the will and the plan of God? By allowing the word of God to come into our mind. By exposing our mind to the word of God. The reason why many Christians are confused is because we don't hear the word, we don't read the word, we don't meditate in the word of God. Now so, when I'm reading the word of God, when you come to the church, are you listening to me? And you're listening to the word of God, what you are doing is that you are educating your mind, you are enlightening your mind, you are giving your mind understanding so that your mind begins to receive what is already in your spirit. When God speaks, God speaks to your spirit. When you ask God, what do I do with my life? And God wants your life to be a blessing to someone, God speaks. He releases that to your spirit. It is your spirit that receives guidance and direction from God. But you may have it in your spirit and you may not know it in your mind. How do I know it in my mind? Then educate your mind. Enlighten your mind. What do I use? The word of God. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? Do you know why? The reason why many of us keep making mistakes is because our Bibles are close to us. We don't open it. We don't read it. We don't listen to it. When we begin to hear the word of God, that's why I'm so excited to see you every time you come. That is why each time, every time that I have to spend with you, I take my time. I prepare my time my, myself to teach you the word of God. Do you know why? Because it is precious to me. Because I know that's the only way to help you to understand the will of God. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? Now, so you need to know that you already have what it takes. Your spirit can understand the will of God. It is your mind that is giving you problem. And that problem is not an incurable problem. Are you listening to me? You can cure the ignorance of your soul by exposing it to the word of God. So... Your spirit is never ignorant of the will of God. It is your soul, your mind that is ignorant. How do you cure the ignorance and expose your mind, your soul also, to the word of God? Do you understand what I'm talking about? So before we go into that, it's so important for me to lay this foundation to let you know that when you say, God, speak to me, what do you want me to do? Immediately you ask God to speak to you, but you may not know it in your mind because God speaks to your spirit. So how do you not connect? How does your mind receive what your spirit already received from God? And that's part of what we'll be dealing with as we move on. Now, I want to say two or three things before we go on. Now, I want you to know that God is much more eager to reveal his will to you much more than you are willing to know. God wanted to know the life that he has planned for you. God is excited about it. God is willing. God wants each and every one of us to know how he wants us to live our life. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? Do you know why? Because knowing that, understanding that, and fulfilling it, that's what gives God a pleasure. 
That's what brings glory and honor to God. When you live your life. Now take for instance, God has planned that my life would be a blessing to our brother. Are you listening to what I'm, And our brother is there asking God, Lord bless me. Lord help me. And God has planning that I'm going to be the instrument, the helper that will help him. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? Now if I don't know that and I'm just living my life anyhow and then he's suffering there. But when I know it and I understand it, and I say, oh yes, so God has blessed me so that I can be a blessing to this, my brother. And then I walk up to him and I bless him with the blessing that God has given to me. Do you know what? He's going to glorify God. He's going to thank God. And that is why God wants you to know much more than you are willing to know. Because when you begin to fulfill your purpose in life, it will bring glory and honor to God. Many life will be touched. Many people will wake up in the morning and say, thank God that you are alive. Thank God because you have touched their life in a unique way. And you listen to what I'm talking about. There are problems in the world that we saw. Do you know why? Because God has equipped you with a solution. There are many people that have questions in their heart. Because God has given you answer. When you speak to them, they answer, they, they'll get answer to their question. And do you know what? They will be happy. You will be happy. And God will be happy. And that's why God wants each and every one of us to know his plan and his will for our life. Look at what the Bible says here. Look, look, look at this few scripture. Let's consider this scripture. Look at the book of Psalm chapter 25. So God is eager to reveal. There's no reluctance on the side of God. God is willing for us to understand his master plan for our life. The book of Psalm chapter 25. Psalm chapter 25. Guys, you need to know the plan of God for your life. God wants you to know. If you ask God, God is willing to reveal it to you. Don't just live your life anyhow. You are not warm enough for the real thing. You are already living your life. Are you listening to This is the real thing. This is the real thing. You, you are not just running your life. You have just one life and you have started living that life. And listen to me, you've got to live it for the purpose for which God designed that life for. And that's what I want to help you to understand. The book of Psalm chapter 25. The book of Psalm 25. Look at verse 8. Psalm 25 verse 8. The Bible says, good and upright is the law. Let's just say God is good. Alright, so my God is good. So the Bible says, good and upright is the law. Therefore, he teaches sinners in the way. Can you see? Even sin does not hinder God from teaching you. He said, even sinners, God wants to teach them. Look at verse 9. He said, the humble, he guides in justice, and the humble, he teaches his way. Can you see God? God is willing to teach even sinners in his way. God is even willing to guide even the sinners. So if God says, guys, even the sinners, I want to guide them. I want each and everyone. Because listen to me, everyone God created, he created them on a purpose. He created them for a purpose. Are you listening? There is none of all that is useless. There is a reason why God created us. Even those who are not in church. Even those who are not in Christ. Even those who are not Christian. God had a plan for their life. God created them because there is something specific, unique, awesome, wonderful that God wants them to achieve with their life. And so God is willing to guide everyone to understand his purpose and plan for their life. Now, John 10, 4, I've read it before. The Bible says he brings out his sheep and he goes before them. Can you see? He said, the Bible says God is always going ahead. In other words, he always wants to lead and guide and direct. So God is always willing. Don't let the devil tell you that God does not want you to know. God wants you to know his perfect will and plan and purpose for your life. Now, you need to see this scripture, Isaiah chapter 30. The book of Isaiah chapter 30, Isaiah chapter 30, verse 21. So God is willing, more willing. God is eager to reveal to you your purpose, your plan that he has already drawn for you. Isaiah 30, verse 21. God wants to lead and guide you. Isaiah chapter 30 verse 21. Look at what God said. Look at God's commitment to lead us and to guide us. Your ears shall hear a word behind you. Saying, this is the way. Walk in it. Whenever you turn to the right hand or whenever you turn to the left. Do you see that guys? God is saying, look, I have committed myself to guide you. Now, so when you stand at a junction and you don't know which way to turn to, God say, if only you can pay attention. I'm speaking to you. It is my desire to guide you. 
Now, now, for those of us who are parents, now, your child, you don't even wait for your child to beg you and say, Mommy, can you lead me? Can you teach me what is right? No, you are more willing to teach your child the right thing than the child is even willing to learn. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? A good parent is willing. You are willing to guide your teenagers. Are you listening to You are willing to direct him or her. The same thing with God, our Father. God is more willing to direct us, to guide us, to teach us the right way than we are willing to receive. So on the side of God, there is no reluctance. Before you ask him, he's already speaking to you. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Now look at what he says in Psalm 32. The book of Psalm chapter 32, verse 8. It's so important so that when you ask God, don't let the devil deceive you and say, no, God won't speak to you. No, God is more willing to speak to you than you are willing to listen. Psalm 32, look at it from verse 8. The book of Psalm 32, God says, I will instruct you. And teach you in the way you should go. Hello? Look at God's commitment to you. God says, I will instruct you, my son. I will teach you, my daughter, in the way you should go. I will guide you with my heart. Psalm 32, verse 8. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will guide you with my heart. Verse 9. Do not be like the horse. Or like the mule, which have no understanding, which must be honest with beat and breed you, else they will not come near you. God said, I'm not going to drag you along the way. I'm not going to force you. Are you listening to me? Have you seen people who try to force their horse? They put something in their mouth, like a, a coat of mail iron, and then they, they control them with that bridle. God said, no, I don't want to do that for you. I want to guide you. I want to teach you. But God said, you need to have understanding. You need to know when I'm speaking to you. You need to recognize that this is the voice of God. And pay attention and listen. And listen to me. So guys, what am I saying? That God wants to speak to us. God is willing to guide us. You don't need to run to anybody to find out God's will for your life. God wants to speak to you personally. Are you listening to me? Don't think about your sin. Because God says, I will guide sinners. I will teach evil sinners. How much more you are not a sinner? You are a saint of God. You are a child of God. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? So God is more interested in leading you, in guiding you, in directing you than you can ever know. Now listen to this. But this is one thing I want us to know. That God is a sovereign God. What does that mean? God is the one that decides and determines how to speak to us, when to speak to us, where to speak to us. Many people run into a problem because they chose for themselves how they want God to guide them and lead them. You understand what I'm talking about? They just say, God, I want to sleep and then you must give me a dream and a vision. No, you are going to miss God like that. Do you know why? Because God is the boss. You don't tell him how to speak to you. <laughs> He's the one that decides how he will speak to you. He's the one that decides how he will guide you, how he will lead you. This is what you need to understand. Yours is to be expectant. Yours is to be sensitive. Yours is to be receptive. Are you listening to me? Let God decide how to speak to you. Let God decide when to speak to you. Let God decide... We are to speak to you. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Now, so don't make that mistake. Understand that. Let God direct you. God is the one that has the right to guide and direct and choose the way you want to guide and direct us. So, if you ask God, I say, God, I know you have a beautiful plan for my life. I want to know the plan. God, I know you have a purpose for my life. I want you to reveal the purpose to me. I'm ready, Lord. I want to live a fulfilled life. I want to live my life according to your plan, according to your purpose for my life. Then God begins to speak to you. God begins to lead you. God begins to guide you in various ways. There are many ways through which God can lead and guide you. Now, I'm going to uh, consider just two or three, and then we'll consider the rest later. How many of you are ready for that? So how does God lead? How does God guide? How does God speak? How does God direct? Number one. Now listen to this. When you ask God to speak to you, to guide you, to lead you, to direct you, to help you to understand his plan and his purpose for your life. Now listen to me. God begins to speak to you from his wall. So number one, 
The first primary way through which God speaks to us is by his word. So we can know God's purpose by the word of God. We can know God's purpose by the spirit of God. We can know God's purpose by the people of God. Now, so let's look at these three today. Are you with me this morning? All right, so how does God speak to us? By his word or from his word. Now, listen to this. Many of us take our Bible to be a historical book. Now, the Bible is not an historical book. Even though it speaks a lot about history. You want to know about the creation of man? You want to know about how God created man, how, God, how man fell? What happened to the first world God created? Now, the Bible talks about all that, but listen to me. The Bible is not just an historical book. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? Many of us, we consider the Bible, now listen to this, as just uh, what they call a prophetic book. A book that talks about the future. Oh, what will happen uh, in, the, in the world? Oh, what is going to happen later? Now, the Bible tells us. You see the book of Revelation, you see the, the book of the prophecy, talking about what will happen in the end time. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? But that is not all that there is in the Bible. The Bible is a living world. The Bible is the word of God for now. So, the Bible does not just speak about the past. The Bible does not speak about the future alone. The Bible speaks about the present hour. Are you with me? So, the word of God is living. So, I can always go to the Bible and find out what God is saying to me now. So, the Bible is a book for now, for now. This is what I'm saying, God's people. The Bible says in the book of Hebrew... Look at what the Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. The Bible said the word of God is living. So when we talk about the word of God, we are not talking about black text on a white paper. Are you listening to me that we carry as the Bible? Now, that is the record of the world. But the word of God is living. God can speak to you from the Bible. When you open your Bible... Now listen to me. What you are hoping is the mind of God for your life. So if I say, I want to know the will of God. I want to, God speak to me. What is your plan for my life? And I close my Bible. You are blocking the channel to which God wants to speak to you. God wants to speak to you from his wall. Every time you come to the church and we read the Bible, every time you hear the word of God, every time at home you open the Bible, that is the mind of God that is being revealed to you. That is the will of God. So the Bible contains the will of God. It reveals the mind of God to us. Now listen to this. Listen to this. When you buy a new device, now, as you open the box, what do you find in the box? You find the booklet. What do they call it? The manufacturer's manual. Is that right? Come on, talk to me, gospel people. Is that right? Now, many of us don't take note of that matter. Many of us don't even read it. It's only when we can set up the device. And when we have problem, then we check, say, where is this manual? But every manufacturer packages his product with his manual. And what does the manual tell you? The manual explains to you everything about that device. The manual tells you how to set it up. Is that right? The manual teaches you how to maximize it, how it functions. Every part and how it functions. It tells you what that device is meant to do. Is that right? It also teaches you how to maintain it. And of course, you also find the warranty there. That in case if things don't go right, then this is your right. This is your warranty. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? Now listen to me, God's people. The Bible is also God's manual for our life. So the Bible is living manual. It's manual for life. God is our creator. Is that right? God made us in his image and after his likeness. And do you know what? God gave us a manual. And that manual is the Bible. The Bible, everything you need to know about your life, about your plan, about God's plan for your life, God already put it in the Bible. In the Bible. It is not your responsibility to take your Bible and begin to search out and begin to find out what God has said about your life, what God has planned for your life. It is in the manual. It is in the Bible. But you know, many of us, we close the Bible. We want to just try it on our own. When do you want to figure it out on your own? When God has given you manual to guide you. No, many of us, we have phones. 
And we are not really making good use of that phone. Do you know why? Because we don't read the man at all. Just say, is it not phone? I know how to set it. I know how to use it. But there are some things that the manufacturer puts in that booklet that will help you. That will guide you. And the same thing with the word of God. So when you open the Bible, you are reading God's manual for your life. Now listen to these, those people. The Bible is like a script. Now listen to this. Now, I want you to see God as a script writer. Now, God has a script. God has a, a grand plan. Are you listening to me? God has a, a play. God has, as it were, like a movie. It's called a redemption movie. A redemption plan. It's a big plan. It's a grand plan. Now, listen to this. And God has already written out the script. The part that he and everyone that he created, we had the role that we're going to play. He's just like a movie producer. Are you listening to me? The movie producer call the actors and the actresses, the artists. And then he gives you what? The script. Is that right? And so what do you have to do? You need to find out your own part in that script. Even though you have the, the script manuscript, you have the big manuscript here. Now, there is something that is peculiar to you. There is a part that you ought to play. Is that right? So what do you do? You read your own part. And then when you come on the stage, what do you do? You act out your own script. The same thing it is that God has a big plan for your world. The plan to redeem the world. Now, the world fell, man fell, we all know that in Genesis. And God has a plan to redeem the world. God has a plan to restore man. God has a plan to save everything. And listen to me, you have a part to play in that God's plan. And you listen to me, and you have to find out what is your plan. And listen to this, this is the script. The script is the Bible. And in that Bible, there is a portion, there is a part, there is a role that you have to play. But if you don't take the script, if you don't open the script, if you don't read the script, you will not find your part. You will not find your part. I wanted to see something about Jesus. Look at the book of Luke chapter 4. The book of Luke chapter 4. I wanted to begin to see your Bible as a big divine script. And your role, your part is in the Bible. You've got to find out what God has written there for you to act out. The book of Luke chapter 4. You need to see this scripture of God's people. Luke chapter 4, look at verse 16. Luke chapter 4, I read from verse 16. Talking about Jesus. He says, so he came to Nazareth. Where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. And stood up to read. Talking about Jesus here. Eh? Luke chapter 4. Verse 17. Eh? And he was under... The book of the prophet Isaiah. So they gave him the book. In those days, the Bible has not been completed. So they have the book of the prophet. So they gave him the book of prophet Isaiah. And look at what the Bible says. And when he had opened the book, Jesus opened the book. You want to find that God's plan for your life? You need to start opening the Bible. You will find it there. And look at what the Bible says. And when he had opened the book, what did he find? He found the place. Let somebody say he found the place. All right. He found the place where it was written concerning him. And he began to say, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken hearted, to proclaim liberty to the captive and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the law. Then he closed the book and gave it back to the attendant and sat down and the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him and he began to say to them, to Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Now look at Jesus. The Bible says Jesus went to the synagogue, to the church like this, and then he asked for the book, and they gave him the book of the prophet of Isaiah. And he found. Now, when you find, it means you seek for something. Is that right? It is he who seek that find. Is that right? Okay. So Jesus found the place. And he read it out. And do you know what he read out? That was his mission statement. What he read out was his own part of the script to play. What he read out was God's plan and purpose for his life. And he told them, do you know, guy, this scripture is fulfilled. This is why I came into the world. Now listen to me. The reason why you also came into the world is somewhere hidden in the Bible. You need to open the world and find it. 
I want to find God's purpose for my life. Search the Bible. It is somewhere hidden in the Bible. Are you with me? The will of God, what God wanted to do, is already written somewhere in the Bible. You need to find it out. In the book of Jeremiah chapter 1, 4, 5, Jeremiah said, and the word of the Lord came to me. I said, Jeremiah, do you know what? Before I formed you in the womb, I already knew you. I already sanctified you. I already ordained you a prophet to the nation. Jeremiah said, the word of the Lord came to me. Now listen to this. When you take your Bible, and then you begin to read your Bible, the word of the Lord is also going to come to you. Because the word of God is living. You begin to see that you get to a place in the Bible. Now listen to me. How many of you have find that? You just get to a place as you are reading and it's like you are just stuck there. And it's like that passage of the Bible is, is bigger, is bolder than the, red, than, than the rest of the context. Do you understand what I'm talking about? It's just, you can't just move on again. Even when you, when, you, when you try to read further, your eyes keep coming back to that. That is God speaking to you. That is the, it's like that scripture is jumping at you. It's like that scripture is yelling at you. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? That is the word of the Lord coming to you. That is how the word of the Lord comes to you. When you find it just like that, there'll be something in your mind, in, I mean in your heart, that will connect with it. Your spirit will just get glued to that. Do you know why? Because that is your script. That is your script. And the more you sit down and to read and to meditate on that, and you begin to ask God, Lord, what is in this verse? What is in this scripture for me? Do you know what begins to happen? God begins to speak to you more through other means. God begins to speak to you through various other ways and you begin to understand what God is saying to you from the scripture. Let me share this with you. When I finished my second degree, you know, uh, in the university, and then I began to pray and say, Lord, what do I do with my life? I don't just want to uh, go get a job just like every other, every other student. I want to do what you have created me to do. Now, listen to this. I was in a meeting in a church like this, and suddenly, a verse of the scripture, I've read that verse before, but that verse just kept coming to me, and then I just take my Bible and I open it. It was Hebrew chapter 5, Hebrew 5, 1 and 2, and then I saw in that scripture, God says, every high priest that is chosen among men is chosen in the things pertaining to God. Now, so I realized from that verse that God has chosen me in the things pertaining to him, to his work. So, in other words, God is saying, no, don't go after a secular job. I want you in my service. Do you understand? Now, so from that scripture, from that little verse, I understand that. And when I began to pray more, I began to fast and say, God, then what do you want me to do? You want me to serve you? Yes, I'm willing to do that. But specifically, what do you want me to do? Then God began to give me more visions and dreams and prophecy. But you know where it started from? From the scripture, from the scripture. That's what I'm saying to you. That if you want to know God's purpose for your life, your Bible must be open to you. You must not close your Bible. Your Bible must be open to your mind. Because the Bible, now listen to me, is God's word to you now. It is God speaking to you. Every time you are opening and reading the Bible, that is God speaking to you. That is God revealing his mind to you. And when you get to where there is a script for you, your spirit will get stuck there. You, without anybody telling you, you will know that there is something in this verse. There is something in this scripture about me and for me. Do you understand? Now look at Jesus. They gave him the book to read. He opened it and he got to a place and he got stuck there. And then he read it out and said, this is my script. This is what I've come to act out. This is the part I've come to play. To preach the gospel to the poor. To heal the broken at it, To declare the acceptable year of the law. The same thing with each and every one of us. If only you can take your Bible. Are you listening to me? And make a commitment. And be disciplined. To read a portion of the scripture every day. One day, listen to me. Very soon, you also you are going to get to a place. And you will stay there. And the spirit will bear witness. That this is your own script. This is what God created tell you for. This is what God wanted to do with your life. Are you following me? So God speak to us primarily from the world, from the Bible. I wanted to see the word of God as a script, a divine script, a grand script. And there is a role, there is a specific part for you to play and it is already written down. 
God's purpose for your life is not something that God is still trying to design, to, to write. It has been written. I told you this uh, in part two of this teaching series that God's purpose for your life has already been fixed, has already been designed. It has already been written. It is already predetermined by God. And do you know God in his wisdom? He has already put it in the Bible. You see people like Daniel, so many of them in the Bible, they find, Daniel said in Daniel chapter 9, he said, I understood by the books. He understood the will, the plan of God for his life and for the nation of Israel by studying the books of the Bible. That's why I encourage you to come to church. Come to the Bible study. Listen to good teachings. Listen to the word of God. Take time to read the word of God. Because when you are reading the word of God, you are reading the mind of God. And listen to me, you're going to find the mind of God for your life. What God wants you to do with your life is already in the Bible. Find the Bible. Search it out. The Bible says Jesus found it. In the Bible, you also can find it in the word of God. Are you clear with that? Yeah. All right, let's take one more before we pray. Now, God also revealed his plan. God revealed his purpose to all through his spirit, the spirit of God. So through the spirit of God, we can also know the will and the plan and the purpose of God for our life. Now, so how does the spirit of God lead and guide us? There are two major ways. Now, listen to me. The Holy Spirit can guide you into the plan of God internally. It can also guide you externally. Now, so two ways. It can guide you inwardly. It can also guide you outwardly. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So, how does it lead inwardly? How does the Spirit of God lead outwardly? Let's look at what the scripture says here. So, you know the plan of God, the purpose of God, by the word of God. There is a scripture for you. There's a scripture that speaks about your purpose. You need to find that scripture. Now listen to me, you can't stumble at that scripture, you need to be a student of the Bible. The Bible said Jesus went to the synagogue and read as his custom was. So that is not the first time he was reading, he has been reading it before. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? So you start reading the Bible, you are going to find a scripture that speaks about your mission statement, that speaks about God's purpose for your life. So now we are on the spirit of God. Look at the Bible, 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Glory be to Jesus. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 3, look at verse 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? Let's have said the Spirit of God dwells in me. Let's try it again. Say the Spirit of God dwells in me. So if you're a child of God, the Bible says you have what? The Spirit of God dwelling in you. Alright? Now, so that means, if you want God to speak to you, to lead you, first check inwardly. It dwells in you. Are you listening? But many of us, we don't. We look externally. We look outwardly. We, look, we run to a prophet. We run to a spiritualist. We run to someone to tell us what is God saying. That's what they say. God dwells in you. Are you, are you with me? So, which, where's the first right place to check? Inward. So, God dwells in you, and he speaks to you from where he dwells in you. He wants to guide you from that place. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? Are you with me? Alright, you don't want to miss it. So, many people have missed that because they are looking externally. Oh, God guides us externally, but God prefers to guide us internally. Because he dwells within us. He dwells in us. John chapter 14. I want you to know that the Holy Spirit, now listen to these gospel people, now just this before we pray. The Holy Spirit is God's helper that is sent to all. The Holy Spirit is our partner. Partner in doing the will of God. He's our partner in purpose. Now, God has a plan for my life. God has a purpose for your life. God knows you cannot do it all alone. God knows you cannot even know it by yourself. And you know what? God sent his spirit to come and live in you, to come and dwell in you, to guide you, to lead you, to direct you, so that you can understand what God wants you to do with your life and to empower you to do it. Listen to me. Many people relate with the Holy Spirit are just an inanimate thing. 
Oh, the Holy Spirit is the power of God. His fire, his wind, his oil. No, those are just metaphors. They are just symbols, representation of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a living personality. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? Holy Spirit is the third personality in the Godhead. John chapter 14. Look at what Jesus said about the Holy Spirit. You have God living in you by His Spirit. And you need to listen to Him. John chapter 14. Look at it from verse 16. Jesus said, I will pray to the Father and I will give you another helper. Let's say another another helper. Some scripture call it another comforter. That he may abide with you forever. So the Holy Spirit is going to abide with you when? How long? Forever. Let somebody shout forever. forever. Do you know why? Because you need him always. Now some people think when you fall, when you make mistake, when you sin, when you fall into sin, the Holy Spirit leaves you. No, that's not what Jesus promised. He said he's going to abide with you forever. I told you some times ago that God's purpose for your life is what you will do forever. As long as you are here. You don't retire from God. You don't say, no, I have finished God's plan for my life, so let me do something. Else. No, you cannot finish it. As long as you are alive, there is something that God wants you to do. And that is why God said, I will give you my spirit, and I will never take him from you. So you have the Holy Spirit, he will stay with you forever, because his mission is to help you, is to guide you, is to empower you to fulfill God's plan and purpose for your life. So Jesus said he's going to be with you forever. Look at what he says for that. The spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor know him. But you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. So the Holy Spirit is in you. Your helper is in you. The divine teacher to guide you is in you. So you have a guide in you always. Hello? So you have the Holy Spirit as a guide. You know where a guide is? When you go to a place and then you don't know the way, then you ask for a guide. Is that right? The guide knows everywhere. And the guide takes you from one point to the other. Is that right? When you have a guide and you follow your guide, you can't miss the way. So the Holy Spirit is God's guide to all. To guide us into God's plan and to God's purpose. To guide us doing what God wants us to do. Listen to me. When you follow the guide, when you listen to the Holy Spirit, your guide, you cannot miss God's plan for your life. You cannot miss God's way. You will know and you will do what is right because your guide knows what is right and is always willing to guide you. Are you with me, God's people? Look at what Jesus said. John chapter 16. John chapter 16. Jesus said, he told his disciples when he was about to go and he was sorrowful from verse 12. John chapter 16 from verse 12. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the spirit of truth, that's the Holy Spirit, has come, he will guide you into what? All truths. Every truth you need to know about yourself Every truth you need to know about God, about God's plan for your life, the Bible said the Holy Spirit can guide you into it. All truths. He knows everything. He said he will not speak on his own authority. Whatever he hears, he will speak and he will tell you things to come. Don't go to stargazers. Don't go to palm readers. Are you listening to me? Don't go to spiritualists. Don't go to false prophets. I say, I want to know what lies ahead. That is why you have the Holy Spirit living in you. The Bible says it will tell you what things to come. I want to know what lies in the future. The Holy Spirit already knows it because he is God. And Jesus promised he will teach you. He will tell you. He will guide you. First Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Look at verse 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9. The Bible says, But it is written, I has not seen, nor he had, nor have it entered into the heart of man, the things which God has prepared for those who love him. So how do we know what God has prepared? Verse 10, But God has revealed them to us through his spirit. Whatever you want to know from God, God reveal it to you through what? Through His Spirit. And His Spirit is not out there. His Spirit is where? In you. In you. Let's just say the Spirit of God is in me. So God will reveal it to you through His Spirit. And you know where that Spirit dwells? It dwells in your spirit. In your body against spirit. And so God reveals His will to you by His Spirit into your spirit. 
Now listen to this. If you get it, then we go. I told you that the Holy Spirit can lead you internally, that is inwardly, because it dwells within you. You have the teacher living in you, you have the guide living in you, you have your partner living in you. And he can also guide you externally. So let's look at this and then we close. How does the Spirit of God guide us or lead us or direct us into the will of God, into the plan of God internally, that is inwardly? Number one, through his voice. The Holy Spirit can speak in words and in picture. Now listen to this. As you are asking God, Lord, what do I do with my life? What is your plan for my life? What is God's perfect will for me? Now listen to this. As you do that in your prayer, in your worship, as you are reading the word of God, as you sit down quietly in the presence of God, the Holy Spirit can speak to you and you will hear his voice. His voice mostly is a still, small, gentle voice. You hear a voice within you. Because it's within you, it doesn't need to shout. It doesn't need to yell. And you listen to what I'm talking about. It lives within you. So he speaks quietly to your heart. He speaks quietly to your spirit. And that's why at times we just hear a voice within you. That is the voice of God. And whatever you want him to, to tell you, to reveal to you, all you need to do is to ask him. And then he speak to you. You hear his voice. At times, he does not speak in words. Now, listen to me. When he speaks to you, he will speak to you a verse of the scripture. I just told you about myself. That I just had Hebrew chapter 5. And then I go and look at that Hebrew chapter 5. That is the Holy Spirit speaking the word of God to me. The Holy Spirit will quicken the word. It will remind you certain verse of the scripture that you have read before. And it will apply it to your life. It will apply it to your situation. Listen to this. The Holy Spirit also guides us internally by what is called impression. What do we call impression? Now, when you are in the presence of God, or maybe you are just doing your normal chores, and then your mind is set on asking God, on finding out what is the will of God for your life. Do you know what? Suddenly you just see like a, like a flash. Something spontaneous. A thought, an idea just comes to your mind. Many of us, we have received that, but we don't know that that is God guiding us. You are not even thinking about it. Maybe you are just doing something. But suddenly, a thought comes into your mind. An idea has come to you. You are not thinking about it. You say, where, where, where does that come from? It comes from the Holy Spirit. It impresses it into your mind. It impresses it into your heart. Do you understand? It's like a stamp. It just puts it. And how do I know that you just realize that it doesn't leave you because it's already impressed upon your mind? Do you understand what I'm talking about? You just see that that thing just keeps coming to you over and over. That same thought coming to you. Maybe you are saying, Lord, what do I do? I've been coming to talk. What's, which area do you want me to walk? And then suddenly you just hear Maybe you are not even thinking about anything concerning that. And then you keep hearing children's department, maybe ushering department, the youth department. You understand? And then you wonder, where's that one coming from? That is the answer to the question you've asked. It just comes spontaneously. It just comes suddenly to you like that. And it is impressed upon you. That thought, it could be a thought, it could be a word, it could be an idea, but it's always spontaneous. It's something you never expect. It's something that you didn't plan for it. And you don't know what I'm talking about. It just came like that. That is what is called impression. It's a mere picture in your mind. The only thing can speak to you through a picture. Just, just flash a picture in your mind. It may be a picture of yourself just doing something. And you don't know what I'm talking about. That is God telling you that is what you should be doing with your life. That's the Holy Spirit speaking to you internally. Maybe there's someone the Holy Spirit wanted to speak to. As you wake up in the morning, you are not thinking of that person. Suddenly, the face of that person just comes to your mind. That's the Holy Spirit. Bring that person to your mind and say, you have something to do to that person. You have something to do for that person. That's the Holy Spirit telling you, God has a plan that you reach out to that person today. Apparently, you may just need the name of that person. Just surface in your heart. How many of you have explained what I'm talking It just surface in your mind. You are not thinking. Now, as a matter of fact, Throughout yesterday, you never thought about that person. You never thought about that thing. But it just came suddenly. That is God speaking to you. That is the way the Holy Spirit leads us internally. Now listen to me. 
The Holy Spirit also leads us by what we call the witness of the Holy Spirit. That's the way it leads us in one. Now, what we call a witness is just like a sign. The Holy Spirit gives you a sign by His fruit. Now, the Bible talks about the fruit of the Holy Spirit, love, joy, and peace. The Holy Spirit can guide you by His joy, by His peace. Who do I marry? Oh, I like Sister Hey, I like Sister B. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? And when you are thinking about Sister Hey, about what will the future with Sister A be? What will the future with Sister B be? Are you listening to me? Now, the Holy Spirit can help you to know who out of the two is the right person for you. How? By his witness. Just realize that why your mind thinks about Sister Hey. There's a kind of a peace that you cannot explain. There's a kind of a joy. And then you just wonder why, why are you so joyful when you think about her, when you think about settling down with her, when you think about the future with her or with him. And when you think about the other sister B, even though in the natural everything seems all right, are you listening to me? But within you, you can't find that peace. There's a restlessness. Are you listening to me? There's a kind of, you don't understand that it's like something is not right. You can't figure out what they say, but what is wrong with her? You can't tell what is wrong with her, but within you, it's like your spirit is, is restless. Your spirit is showing disapproval. That is the only thing. It's showing a disapproval that that is not the right person. The same way when you want to go to the right or left, when you are thinking of, do I do this? Do I do that? And then you have joy or you don't have a joy in your heart. You don't have a peace. You have a tightness. You have a restlessness. That is the Holy Spirit saying, no. The Holy Spirit guides us by what is called a nudge. A nudge is just like a push. Now, when you say, it is coming to my mind to work in the youth department. Now, when you are thinking about, when you are talking about, you feel like a push within you. And you listen to what I'm telling you, it's like someone just give you a push and say, like, go ahead. Just like somebody patting you on the shoulder and saying, just go ahead. That is it. That is the Holy Spirit confirming to you that that is the purpose of God for your life. That is what God wants you to do. He gives you a nudge. He gives you a push in your spirit. How many of you understand what? You just find that you are excited about it. It's like you can't wait to do it because the Holy Spirit is pushing you ahead to do it. Now, these are ways that the Holy Spirit inwardly, internally, can help us to discover God's plan and purpose for our life. What about externally? And then we pray. The Holy Spirit can also speak to you through what is called vision and dream. What's the difference between vision and dream? Dream is what you have in the night when you sleep. You don't have a vision when you are asleep. You have dream when you are Somehow unconscious. Are you listening to me? And then it's just like a living images. You just find yourself maybe in your dream uh, doing something or some, somebody speaking to you, talking to you and all that. But you are fast asleep. Are you listening to me? That is God speaking to you externally through dream. Now, some people have vision. Now, you may have vision maybe when you come down and you are about to sleep but you know you are not sleeping yet. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? It, it, it's like a, a, a flash. It's, 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 it's like an inspired revelation. You just find something revealed to you. Now, you may see like somebody opening your eye and just see something. Most times, visions are not long. They are always very brief. Dreams, some people can dream for hours. <laughs> As they sleep like this, till they wake up, they are dreaming. But vision is not like that. Vision is always very brief. It's just inspire revelation. Living images. So, maybe you, you just find yourself like you are, you are slumbering, but you know you are still conscious. Are you listening to me? And then you see certain things. That is vision. That is the way, one of the ways God speaks to us and seeks to guide us externally. Now, let me close with this. The Holy Spirit also guides us externally through prophecy. Now, what do I mean by that? The Holy Spirit can speak to people and then they come to us and say, uh, Brother, uh, while I was praying this morning, the Holy Spirit spoke to me to come and sh- tell you this. That is guiding you, Esther. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? Now, maybe you've been asking God, Lord, what do I do? What do I, which way do I go? Now, and then somebody comes and then he gives you a word of prophecy, like in the church now. You know, a word of knowledge, a, a word of wisdom can come. And then God said, there's someone here. And then God speak to you and address something in your life and give you a guidance. That is also God, the Spirit of God, guiding you externally. 
Are you listening to me? So the Holy Spirit guide us internally. He also guide us externally. How do I know if it is God that is speaking to me? As we close. Now one of the ways to know that is that when God is the one speaking to you or guiding you, God speaks according to his nature. How many of you know that God is a God of peace? God is a perfect gentleman. So when you hear a voice that is yelling at you, when you hear a voice that is always uh, uh, wide, a voice that is pushing you and say, you have to do this. If you don't do this, I'm going to kill you. If you don't do this, now that cannot be God. That's the devil. The Bible says, and we hear what God will say, Psalm 82 verse 5, he said, God will speak peace to his people. God speaks to God gently. Are you listening to me? So when you hear a voice that does not want you to think, a voice that is just telling you, do it now. If you don't do it now, now, anything like that, God one of the fruits of the Spirit, one of the nature of God is patient. Are you listening to me? Now, so, if a voice is hurrying you to do something and not giving you time to think it through, to think it over, that is not God. God speaks according to his nature. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? Next week, I'm going to continue on that, but I wanted to know that when God speaks to you, God gives you time to prove it. God allows you time to be fully convinced that it is God speaking to you. So God has not speak to you and said, now, you must do it now, or if you don't do it, no, that's not God. So if somebody gives you a word of prayer and says, now, you've got to do it right now. Tell the person, give me time. Tell that voice, no, I'm going to prove it. I just read to you that you need to prove the voice of God. You need to prove, the Bible says, so that you can prove the will of God. Prove it so that you can test that it is genuine. And you listen, the devil does not want you to test his voice. Are you listening? The devil tell you, now, 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 you've got to do it. No, that's not the way God speaks to you. God wants you to be convinced. God wants you to, to be sure that it is God that is speaking to you and that he's the one that is telling you what he wants you to do. The Bible says you should test every spirit. Are you listening to what I'm So when the spirit speaks to you, you can test it. By the nature. It is according to God's nature. It is according to devil's nature. You can also test it by its conformity with the word of God. What that voice is telling you is that according to the word of God, God will never curse his children. God will never condemn his children. Even if you are in sin, God will not condemn you. God will assure you of his love, of his forgiveness. Are you listening to me? God will assure you of his help. But when a voice is condemning you, when a voice is releasing judgment on you and telling you you are doomed, you are a failure, you cannot do anything right, then you need to rebuke that voice. That is the devil. That's not God. Let's move we're going to continue with that. Can you rise to your feet? Glory be to Jesus. You can know the voice of God. You can hear the voice of God. You can recognize the voice of God. I want you to pray and say, Father, in the name of Jesus. I want you to guide me. I want you to lead me. I want to discover your plan for my life. I want to discover your will, your purpose for my life. I want to ask the Lord, Lord, grant me understanding. Give unto me this time. When you speak to me, whether internally, whether externally, whether inwardly, whether outwardly, help me to recognize it. Help me to know it. Help me to understand your will. I want to pray and say, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. I want to walk in the path of purpose. I want to live a fulfilled life. I want to know the will, the plan, and the purpose of God for my life. Whichever way you choose to speak to me, whichever way you choose to guide and direct me, help me, Lord, to recognize him. Help me to prove your will, to know what is the acceptable, perfect will of God. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Father, I just pray for everyone under the sound of my voice. I pray, Father, that whichever way, Lord, you choose to speak, to lead, to guide, to direct your people, Help them, Lord, to recognize your voice, Lord. Help your people to know, Lord, when you are guiding them, when you are directing them, when you are instructing them, when you are teaching them the way to follow. I'm asking, oh God, that each and every one here will know, will recognize, will understand your voice. Lord, I come against every spirit of confusion. I come against it in the name of Jesus. God. I rebuke you right now. I ask for spirit of clarity, Lord. I pray for discernment for your people. In the name of the Lord Jesus, God. Sweet Holy Spirit, I pray that each and every one that is here, Lord, when you lead, when you guide, when you direct us, Grant us the grace to follow. Grant us the grace to obey, to respond, Lord, to your voice, to your leading, to your guidance. Thank you, Father. 
Let there be no one under the sound of my voice, Lord. They will be confused about your will. Let each and every one understand for sure, for certainty, what we want them to do with their life. Thank you, Father. And in Jesus' name we pray. Can I hear you say loud, Amen. Amen. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. We hope you have been challenged, encouraged, and motivated to become more like Christ by today's teaching. If you would like to find out more about Errands of Revival and get additional teachings and materials for your healthy, spiritual growth, visit our website today at www.eradsofrevival.org.uk Or if you would like to enroll at our School of Discipleship, visit our website www.theschoolofdiscipleship.org UK. This teaching was made possible by the prayers and generous free will offering, donation, and gifts from partners like you. You are welcome into partnership with us today. For information on how to become a partner, please call 1-868-292-9270 or 1-868-703-5572. Or you can email us at info at erasofrevival.org.uk. Thanks for listening.